Hello friends and welcome into NFL Daily. I am your host Tom Downey and as promised we are doing an NFL mailbag for you guys here today and we're going to get things going with the super chat that came in from Vernon Spades. I told you we'd take care of you my man. Top five of the worst picks from the NFL draft. Expletive deleted. Player of the Cowboys took is the clear number one. Other than him, who do you have? I'll go four here. I got in order of where they were taken. Trey McKitty was a not top 150 guy for me. So I love what the Chargers did overall, but that was a reach at number 98. Deshaun Wright, I still don't get that pick at number 99 overall. Uh, Kene Nwongu, I like as a special teamer. I think he's going to be really good as a kick return guy. I don't know if you draft that guy at 119. That was like a good 50, 60 picks early. And then kicker Evan McPherson out of Florida. Don't draft kickers because the Bengals didn't learn their lesson the last time that they did that. All right, Hunter 84. Could a Gilmore for Julio trade work or do the Falcons just want picks? I think in the end, I, although I appreciate you trying to be creative there with a Gilmore Julio Jones swap, in theory, the point of the Falcons moving on from Julio is to save money, which, okay, makes sense. But if you're bringing on Gilmore, you're going to pay him, and then, then all of a sudden you're not saving money. From a need perspective for both teams, a, a swap of some type, Page is probably giving up picks as well, actually does kind of make some sense. But I think if the Falcons do trade Julio Jones, I think it would be for picks. Of course, they just spent their first round pick on a tight end. Feels like they're trying to win right now. Trading away Julio Jones does not do that. From Mark Mills, Russell Wilson for Aaron Rodgers. Who says no? It's clever. Uh, I think Seattle ends up saying no because with just the way the Russell Wilson contract is currently constructed, although I guess waiting until after June 1st does make it a little bit more palatable there. I wonder if both teams would, would end up saying no here. I appreciate trying to get creative, though, with two different quarterbacks who have been the subject of trade rumors this offseason. So let's say you could pick just one quarterback, and we'll take the money out of it because I think the money is a big factor here. But which quarterback would you rather have on your team? This is going to be the pinned comment, actually, on today's video. So get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down, and spam the comment section with your answers. Type RW for Russell Wilson or type AR for Aaron Rodgers. All right, from Fish the second. How do you think the Seahawks will implement K. Johnson and Tamori and Terry into the offense? They might be two UDFAs, but I think they're very solid receivers. Good question. Uh, Tamori and Terry is an outside vertical threat wide receiver, is a kind of that typical X receiver where he's going to go, go downfield, kind of like your maybe your DK Metcalf backup if he makes the team. K. Johnson, meanwhile, slot receiver, good route runner, good hands as well. Maybe your Dwayne Eskridge back up in year one. I don't know if both guys will make the roster. I'd say they're, they are very in good shape to at least make the practice squad. We'll see what ends up happening there. But I do think both guys should have been drafted, and I like those pickups for Seattle. From Jonathan Vasquez, since the Dolphins missed on a running back in the draft, should Miami sign Le'Veon Bell? Um, I mean, sure, if you want. They were linked to Lev Bell in the off or in the, in the season, when he got cut, excuse me, and then they ended up not getting him because he went to the Chiefs, and maybe that was for the best in the end. I don't know how much in the tank there's left for Lev Bell at this point. From Clay Elliott, should the Dolphins go after a running back like Todd Gurley since they did not draft one? So two similar questions here, just different players. I actually almost combined these, but wanted to stick with it. Uh, Gurley makes more sense to me than Lev Bell does just with where he's at in his career. Now, I do want to make one thing one thing very obvious. Todd Gurley was bad down the stretch. The past two years, he's averaged about 3.7 yards per carry. That's just a guy type of production. So, yeah, you can bring in Gurley if you want. I don't know if Gurley or Lev Bell, however, actually fit, if any free agent out there, fixes the, the Dolphins' backfield issues. Folks, Chat Sports is now on the News Break app. Download it today at chatsports.com slash newsbreak. Right there, bottom of your screen. Also, right there, top as well. It's not just sports videos you can get, by the way, from Chat Sports. There's local news and weather, politics, food, pop culture, all kinds of important stuff that you would normally get in the paper. But, like, the paper 
who gets it delivered these days anymore. Exactly. Now, it's all right on your phone. So get the local news that you need by downloading the app at chatsports.com slash newsbreak. We will put that link in the comment section and in the description. And oh, by the way, when you download it using our link, it helps support the show as well. So go get it today, chatsports.com slash newsbreak. One more time for you guys. I will put that link in the comment section and in the description to help make your lives a little bit easier. From Mikey, which team will most likely pick number one next year and what options are there to pick? Great question. Uh, we will see which team ends up picking number one overall. Probably a team not in a great quarterback spot. I'm tempted to throw shade at, at producer Sam instead of Denver Broncos, but I don't think that's really going to be the case. There, you'll find some bad teams out there this year. In terms of the options, how about this? How about you make sure your notifications are set to all because we will do a 2022 way too early NFL mock draft in the very near future. So make sure your notifications are set to all. The default on YouTube is personalized, which means that you'll miss videos. So hit the bell button on your app. Make sure it's set to all instead of personalized. Less than a quarter of you guys who are subscribed actually have it set up that way. Let's get that changed. Make those sure those notifications are set to all. And stay tuned for our 2022 NFL Mock Draft. From Conway Stern, did the Falcons mess up by not drafting any of the quarterbacks this year? I actually don't think so. If you weren't going to take one at four, which Lance was off the board, so it was down to Justin Fields, I would have been fine taking Fields. But if you weren't going to go quarterback at four, I didn't see the benefit of taking a, a Davis Mills, a Kyle Trask, a Kellen Mond. Like, I don't think those guys are going to develop into legitimate starting caliber quarterbacks. So, and even if they are, it was a really long shot reach there. He had all these needs on defense, on the offensive line, etc. So I actually get that from the Falcons' perspective. I got no problem with them passing on a quarterback this year because next year's class doesn't appear to be as top-heavy right now, but the depth is much better. Now, which team do you think had the best NFL draft class this year? My vote the Chicago Bears. We did an entire breakdown of draft grades, but I want to hear from you guys as well on today's video. Get your votes in and let me know who you think had the best draft class in 2021. From Stephen Payne, should the Chiefs sign Richard Sherman? I mean, yeah, that's that's fine on that front um, if you want. Sherman has been linked to five teams, the Jets, the, the Niners, the Raiders, the Saints, and the Seahawks, so it's possible but I wouldn't necessarily get my hopes up for Kansas City going out and getting Richard Sherman. I think he's going to go somewhere else. I think he wants to be on the West Coast, but I still like the Jets as a potential landing spot. So make your predictions for me. Who do you believe will end up signing Richard Sherman? Is it one of those five teams I just mentioned or somebody else altogether? Get your votes in right now. All right, from I am Javarius, another Chiefs question here. J.C. Jackson to Kansas City. Uh, probably not. I, I think that Jackson will most likely play out this year with the Patriots. They gave him the second round tender to almost dare a team to, to come try and trade for him. They could still work out a deal if they wanted to after the draft as well. I think in the end, Jackson plays this year for the Patriots and then enters the open market. I like him as a number two playmaking corner, kind of like Marcus Peters in, in that mold when he's got a, a Marlon Humphrey opposite him. So I like the idea. I like teams going after corner. I just don't think it's going to be with J.C. Jackson this year. From Greg with two Gs, Murray, any or percent chance Aaron Rodgers gets traded to Denver by 2022? So I'll say by the 2022 season, so either this offseason or next one. I think a an Aaron Rodgers move out of Green Bay, probably like 80%. 85%. Like I think it's I think it's really likely at some point within the next calendar year that Rodgers ends up getting moved by the Green Bay Packers as specifically for or specifically towards Denver. I think they are one of the front runners. I think Denver, Las Vegas, they make the most sense. We broke down that video earlier today as well. I don't want to go above like 30% for any one team, so maybe it's like 25%, but in terms of like the actual percent chance, 25 is pretty darn high. 
I would not be surprised if Rodgers ends up playing for the Denver Broncos. And if I'm their front office, if I'm their coaching staff, knowing that Vic Fangio's kind of sort of on the hot seat, I'd be pushing that one pretty strong. Because if I get Aaron Rodgers, my job's safe. And you know what else? I'm probably going to be a playoff team as well.